Welcome back to the Victory Education Lounge. I'm your host, Morris, and today we're diving into a crucial topic, School Days, Empowering Sickle Cell Students, Part 17. Before we explore this important subject, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Your engagement helps us reach more students, parents, and educators navigating the challenges of sickle cell disease in the academic world. Education is a fundamental right and a powerful tool for every child's future. For students with sickle cell disease, the journey through school can be filled with unique challenges but also incredible opportunities for growth and success. Today, we'll explore strategies to empower sickle cell students, ensuring they can thrive academically while managing their health. Have you ever wondered how we can empower students with sickle cell disease in their academic journey? Welcome to another episode where we shine a spotlight on the importance of inclusive education for all. Today, we're focusing on students with sickle cell disease. Despite the unique challenges they face, these students can and should enjoy a fulfilling academic journey, and we all have a role to play in that. So, what are the keys to empowering sickle cell students? First, we have educational accommodations, which are necessary adaptations that make the learning environment more accessible. Next, we delve into health management at school, a crucial balance of medical needs and academic responsibilities. Then there's social integration, fostering an inclusive environment that promotes understanding among peers. We also look at academic success strategies to overcome potential obstacles to learning. Lastly, we'll discuss empowerment and self-advocacy, teaching students to voice their needs effectively. Now let's explore some real-life scenarios that illustrate these aspects. Real-life scenarios provide a practical perspective of the challenges and opportunities for students with sickle cell disease. Imagine being 12-year-old Zoe. She's a seventh grader with a love for art and a knack for solving math problems. She also happens to have sickle cell disease. Zoe, along with her parents and teachers, has developed an Individualized Education Program, or IEP, this plan allows her to take extra rest breaks and provides her with flexible deadlines during her pain crises. Zoe's IEP ensures she can focus on her health without falling behind academically. Let's meet another student, Aiden. He's 10 years old, loves soccer, and has a contagious laugh. Aiden's physical education teacher creates modified activities so he can participate safely in sports while managing his energy levels. Aiden's PE plan allows him to enjoy physical activity, an essential part of school life, without overexerting himself. Now picture Sophia, a 15-year-old with a passion for science and a dream to become a doctor. Sophia has sickle cell disease and decides to educate her classmates about it. With her teacher's support, she gives a presentation on sickle cell disease, breaking down stereotypes, increasing understanding among her peers, and reducing stigma. Sophia's presentation not only educates but also fosters a more inclusive and understanding environment. Next we have the Williams twins, James and Emma. They're 14, navigating high school together. James has sickle cell disease while Emma does not. The school provides James with necessary accommodations, like extra time on tests and a lighter backpack, while also ensuring Emma's academic and emotional needs are met. The twin situation highlights the importance of a balanced approach that recognizes the needs of both the student with the disease and their siblings. Finally, let's talk about Maya, an 18-year-old preparing for college. Maya works tirelessly with her high school counselor and college disability services to ensure a smooth transition to higher education. She ensures that she has the right support systems in place to manage her sickle cell disease while pursuing her degree. Maya's story underscores the importance of planning and preparation for the next big leap in a student's life. Each of these students, Zoe, Aiden, Sophia, James and Maya, are navigating the school experience while managing sickle cell disease. Their stories are unique, yet they share common threads, the need for understanding, flexibility and support. They highlight the challenges of living with a chronic illness while pursuing an education. But more importantly, they illuminate the possibilities that arise when schools, families and students work together to create an empowering and inclusive educational environment. 
these examples highlight both the challenges and the possibilities. Now, let's explore some solutions. Understanding the available solutions and management strategies is key to empowering students with sickle cell disease. The first strategy is implementing 504 plans or individualized education programs known as IEPs. These are formal plans developed by educators, parents, and the student to address specific needs related to the student's medical condition. The upside? They ensure legal protection and consistent support for the student. However, the downside is that they can be complex to develop and may lead to perceptions of special treatment. But remember, these plans are not about favoritism, they're about fairness and providing equal opportunities for all students. Next up is partnering with school nurses. School nurses can be a pivotal resource for students with sickle cell disease. They provide on-site medical support and can facilitate a quick response to health issues. The flip side, not all schools have full-time nurses and this strategy requires ongoing communication between the school, parents and the student. Nonetheless, a strong partnership with a school nurse can be a significant asset in managing sickle cell disease at school. Thirdly, adapting attendance policies is another effective management strategy. Health crises related to sickle cell disease can occur unexpectedly and may require the student to miss school. Flexible attendance policies can reduce stress during these times, allowing the student to focus on recovery. The downside is that it can lead to missed class time and require additional effort to catch up. Still, the benefit of reduced stress and improved health often outweighs the potential academic hurdles. Last but not least, we have technology integration. Today's digital age provides numerous tools for remote learning, which can be a lifesaver during extended absences. Students can participate in class virtually, submit assignments online, and maintain educational progress even while at home. The advantage? It maintains educational continuity and reduces the academic impact of absences. The drawback? It requires reliable internet access and can potentially lead to feelings of isolation. Despite these challenges, technology integration can play a significant role in supporting students with sickle cell disease. While all these strategies help, it's equally important to focus on empowering students to advocate for themselves. Remember, each student's journey with sickle cell disease is unique, and what works for one might not work for another. The key is to create an environment of understanding, adaptability, and support, where students feel empowered to speak up for their needs and be active participants in their education. Empowerment and self-advocacy are crucial for students with sickle cell disease. These words ring true now, more than ever before. The journey of a sickle cell student is marked with unique challenges that require unique solutions. And who better to voice these needs than the students themselves? You see, empowering these students begins with a simple realization. They are not just patients, they are individuals. They have dreams, aspirations, and a voice that deserves to be heard. It's about teaching them to speak up, to express their needs, and to assert their rights. It's about instilling in them the confidence to say, I need a break, or I need to take this test at a different time. But this is not a solo journey. The role of educators, parents, and peers in supporting self-advocacy cannot be overstated. As educators, it's about fostering an environment where students feel safe to express their needs. It's about listening, understanding, and taking action. Parents play a crucial role too. They can be the guiding light helping their children find their voice and teaching them to use it effectively. Peers also have an essential role. They can provide a supportive community, one that understands and respects the needs of their fellow students. It's about fostering empathy, breaking down barriers, and building bridges of understanding. So how do we promote empowerment and self-advocacy? It starts with open dialogue. Encourage conversations about sickle cell disease, Teach students about their rights and the resources available to them. Provide them with the tools they need to express their needs effectively. And remember, empowerment is not a one-time event, it's a continuous process. It's about constant support, reassurance, and encouragement. It's about reminding these students that they have a voice and that their voice matters. 
In the end, empowering students with sickle cell disease starts with understanding their unique challenges and needs. It's about seeing past the disease and recognizing the extraordinary individuals that they are. With empowerment and self-advocacy, these students can overcome any hurdle and reach for the stars. To sum up, we've taken a deep dive into the world of students with sickle cell disease, exploring the unique challenges and opportunities they face in their academic journey. We've seen the importance of educational accommodations tailored to the individual needs of each student, and how these adaptations can facilitate a more inclusive, supportive learning environment. We've also highlighted the vital role of health management at school, ensuring students can balance their medical needs with their academic responsibilities. We've underscored the value of social integration, fostering an environment of understanding and inclusivity among peers. We've delved into strategies for academic success, helping students overcome potential obstacles to learning. And finally, we've shown a light on the power of empowerment and self-advocacy, teaching students to speak up for their needs and rights. By understanding and addressing these aspects, we can help students with sickle cell disease thrive in their academic journey. Before we wrap up, a quick disclaimer. The information in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Any health-related decision should be discussed with a licensed physician, and educational plans should be developed in conjunction with school professionals. Thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge for this important discussion. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Your engagement helps us create more valuable content and reach students, families, and educators who need this information. Until next time, this is Morris, reminding you that with the right support and mindset, sickle cell students can achieve their full academic potential and prepare for a bright future.